MCQs on anti-cancer agents. Identify the correct statement regarding the two drugs P and Q that show their activity against cancerous cells. So here is a plot of percentage cells killed versus dose and here the two drugs P and Q are going to give the two plots. P is a straight line and Q is a straight line followed by a plateau phase. Now the options are A. P is cell cycle specific. B. Q is cell cycle specific. C. Both P and Q are cell cycle specific. And D. Both P and Q are cell cycle non-specific. So by just seeing this picture, we have to identify which is the cell cycle specific agent and which is the cell cycle non-specific agent. So here the right answer is the B. Q is the cell cycle specific. So here cell cycle specific drug is given a plot which is a straight line up to a certain dose followed by a curved line with a plateau phase. Now within the cell cycle S phase is the DNA synthesis phase where the new DNA molecules are going to be synthesized. And M phase is the mitosis phase where the cell division is going to take place. And these two phases are connected with the G1 and G2 phases which are responsible for the synthesis of the enzymes and other components required for these two phases. So for an anti-cancer drug that acts on the cell cycle, it should act on any of these phases and block the cell division. Now the cell cycle specific agents can inhibit the S phase, otherwise they can inhibit the M phase, which are the two important phases within the cell division. And few of the anti-cancer agents can also block the G1 and G2 phases and we can observe few of the drugs which are going to inhibit this G2 phase which are found useful in the cancer therapy. So with the cell cycle specific agents, as we increase the dose, the cell death is also going to be increased linearly. But after a certain dose, at a high dose, we can observe a plateau phase. Why we observe the plateau phase? Because the drugs are acting on the cell cycle specific, that means they are acting on a specific phase of the cell cycle. At a high dose, so what are the cancerous cells present in the S phase, M phase, as well as the G1 and G2 phase are already killed and there is no viable cell within these phases. So here cell cycle specific agents can act only on the dividing cells but they cannot act on the already formed cells. So in this way at a high dose whenever all the dividing cells are killed the percentage of the cell death will not increase with the increase in the dose. That means we can observe a plateau at the high dose with the cell specific agents. So in the given diagram we can observe that the Q is going to show a linearity up to a certain dose and after a high dose it has shown some plateau. So Q is the nothing but the cell cycle specific agents and P is the plot that is given by cell cycle non-specific agents. Next question which of the following anti-cancer agents act as cell cycle specific? P is the chlorambucil, Q carmastine, R. Vincristine and S. Bleomycin. So here the options are A. RS, B. QS, C. PQ and D. PR. So here we have to identify which drugs are cell cycle specific. So here the right answer is R and S. That is Vincristine and Bleomycin. So here we can easily remember which type of drugs are cell cycle specific and which type of drugs are cell cycle non-specific. First of all, let us see cell cycle specific agents. So for an anti-cancer agent that is to be acting as an cell cycle specific, it should act on the two important phases, either S phase or M phase. So drugs acting on the S phase mainly include the anti-metabolites. Because S phase is the DNA synthesis, the anti-metabolites can inhibit the DNA synthesis. For example, we have one of the drug methotrexate. Methotrexate is an antifolate which inhibits the folic acid utilization. Similarly, other drugs like the 5-fluorouracil, 6-mercaptopurin, they can act as an anti-metabolites for the pyridine and purine nucleotides. Similarly, other drugs include the thioguanine, azathioprine, so many drugs are there which are acting like an anti-metabolites and they are acting on the S phase. Similarly, other drugs are the podophilotoxins. Podophilotoxins like the atiposide and teniposide can also inhibit the DNA synthesis by their action on the topoisomerase enzyme. And drugs which are acting on the M phase mainly include the vincalkylides. So vincalkylides like vincristine and vinblastine, 
come under this category. Similarly, other drugs like the taxanes, paclitaxel and docetaxel can also act on the M phase. So many drugs can act on the G2 phase along with their action on the S or M phase. Here, one of the drugs which is specifically acting on the G2 phase include the bleomycin. Bleomycin causes the DNA strand damage, but it's going to act specifically on the G2 phase. So these are the various drugs which are acting like cell cycle specific acids. Now let us see the cell cycle non-specific acids. So cell cycle non-specific acids are acting on both dividing as well as non-dividing cells. So they include alkylating agents. Alkylating agents will cause a cross linkage in the DNA thereby they can cause the damage of the DNA. So drugs like the chlorambucil, cyclophosphamide and nitrosoureas like the carmestin, lomestin and busulfon all these type of drugs are acting like the alkylating acids. And similarly platinum compounds like the cisplatin, oxaliplatin can also cause the cross linkage within the DNA. Cytotoxic antibiotics like the doxorubicin, donorubicin, dactinomycin, all these can act as a cell cycle non-specific acids. Here we have to remember that the bleomycin, even it is related to these antibiotics, but it acts as a cell cycle specific because of its action on the G2 phase of the cell cycle. And other drugs like the campothecins, including the irinotican and topotican are also cell cycle non-specific acids. Next question. The drug corresponding to the letter O in the R-CHOP regimen used for the chemotherapy of lymphocytic leukemia is A. Omalizumab B. Ondoncitron C. Vincristine and D. Prednisone So in the R-CHOP regimen, the multi-drug regimen, what is the letter O indicates? So here the O indicates Vincristine. So C is the answer. What is the R chop regimen. R indicates a monoclonal antibody that is a rituximab. So these drugs act as a monoclonal antibody thereby it is going to antagonize the CD20 cells. And C is the cyclophosphamide. Cyclophosphamide is an alkylating acid. And H is the hydroxydonorubicin. This hydroxydonorubicin is also called as doxorubicin. This drug is an anthracycline antibiotic that acts by damaging the DNA. O is the oncovin. Oncovin is nothing but the vincristine. This vincristine is going to inhibit the mitotic division of the cells. And P is the prednisone, one of uh, glucocorticoid acting as an anti-cancer acid. So all these drugs are commonly used in the treatment of lymphocytic leukemia. So here O indicates oncovin. Oncovin is nothing but the vincristine. Similarly here H indicates the doxorubicin. So these should be remembered because they are starting with the different letters. Next question. Identify the products from the following. P. Busulfon. Q. Tacarbazine. R. Cisplatin. And S. Chlorambucil. So options are A. P. B. Q. C. R. And D. P. And S. So here the right answer is the Q. Dacarbazine. This is the structure of dacarbazine. So dacarbazine is chemically an imidazole carboxamide. So we can observe the imidazole ring which is attached to a carboxamide. And this imidazole carboxamide is attached with a dimethyl triazino compound. So that's why it's called as dimethyl triazino imidazole carboxamide. So DTIC. This drug acts as a prodrug when and when it is given into the body, it undergoes the metabolism by the liver cytochrome P450 enzymes so that one of the methyl group is going to be removed. So it is undergoing the end demethylation. So when it is undergoes the end demethylation, it produces the ender metabolite MTIC, methyl triazino imidazole carboxamide. And after removal of this methyl group, this triazino linkage is going to be cleared. It releases one of the ion that is methyl diazonium ion. This diazonium ion can act as an alkylating agent, thereby it can produce a cross linkage between the DNA strands. In this way, dacarbazine acts as an alkylating agent, but it is not is an active drug, it is a prodrug. It is going to be metabolized by the liver cytochrome P450 enzyme so that it releases the methyl diazonium ions. Next question. Select the drug from the following that shows a significant interaction with the allopurinol. A. 5-fluorouracil, 
B. Methotrexate, C. Chlorambucil, and D. 6 Mercaptopurine. So, here the right answer is 6 Mercaptopurine. So, yellow purinol shows a significant interaction with the 6 Mercaptopurine. And at the same time, yellow purinol can be given along with the 5 fluorouracil. 5 fluorouracil can produce some mouth ulcers which can be treated by yellow purinol mouthwash. So, this is the structure of uh, 6 mercaptopurine and we can observe that it is having a thio group at the 6th position and this is the structure of the yellow purinol. We can observe that both structures are similar. In the 6 mercaptopurine it is having the thio group at the 6th position but in the yellow purinol it is having the carbonyl group at the 6th position. Because of the structural similarity there is an interaction between the 6 mercaptopurine and yellow purinol. So, 6 mercaptopurine can be converted into 6 thioinosinic acid by one of the enzyme HGPRT, hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase. By this enzyme, the 6 mercaptopurine can be converted to 6 thioinosinic acid. Now, this is going to be acting as an antimetabolite, and this is going to be incorporated so that it is going to be converted into 6 thioguanine, which replaces the guanine. So, when this theoguanine is going to be incorporated into the DNA, the DNA becomes non-functional. And 6 mercaptopurine can be metabolized into the 6 thiouric acid by the xanthine oxidase enzyme. So, whenever we are going to use the allopurinol along with the 6 mercaptopurine, the allopurinol can act as a competitive inhibitor of this uh, xanthine oxidase enzyme, thereby it can inhibit the metabolism of the 6 mercaptopurine. So, allopurinol can increase the levels of 6 mercaptopurine leading to its toxicity. So, this is one of a important drug interaction that may precipitate the toxicity of the 6 mercaptopurine.